In this video we talk about transformers. We see what a transformer is and how it works. The transformer is used to step up or down electrical dimension as voltage or current. A transformer uses two inductors wrapped up on the same iron core. We saw inductor and induction phenomena in a previous video of which we leave the link in the description. The first inductor is called the primary coil and the second the secondary coil. The physical principle on which the operation of transformer is based is the electromagnetic induction. If we pass an alternating current in the primary coil, a variable magnetic field is created, so a variable magnetic flux is generated through the turns of the primary coil. The iron core is used to convey the magnetic flux on the second coil and from Faraday and Lenz law an EMF is generated on the secondary coil ends. This EMF is equal to the flux variation times the number of second coil turns. In an ideal transformer we assume no flux leakage, so the flux on the primary coil is equal to the flux on the secondary coil. The voltage V1 of the primary coil is equal to the flux variation on the primary coil times the number of turns of the primary coil. In the ideal case, all the flux is conveyed without a leakage, so the flux variation on the primary coil is equal to the flux variation on the secondary coil. From this equality comes the fundamental equation of transformers. This equation states that the ratio between the primary and secondary voltage is equal to the ratio of the number of turns. So, if we want to step down the voltage from 10 volt to 5 volt, the secondary coil needs to have half number of turns in respect to the primary coil. And if we want to step up the voltage, we have to put more turns on the secondary coil. Acting on the number of turns, we can step up or down an alternating voltage. This is the fundamental function of a transformer. In order to find the current ratio, we see that in an ideal transformer with no losses, the power on the primary coil has to be equal to that of the secondary coil. So P1 is equal P2, and making explicit voltage and current, we can write this equation. So we get the ratio of currents and number of turns. Imagine to have the impedance Z2 on the secondary circuit. The impedance we see looking into primary is Z2 times the square of the ratio of N1 and N2. Here an example of step-up transformer because as you can see the number of turns of the secondary coil is higher than that of the primary coil. As you can see the voltage is alternating. Without alternating voltage we would have no flux variation and no EMF induced on the secondary coil. So the transformer works only with alternating current. You see in this case the secondary voltage is in phase with the primary but this depends on the winding direction of the secondary turns. With the other winding direction we would get a secondary dimension out of phase. Ideal transformers don't exist. They always have some flux losses in some way. If you look at this picture you can see that not all the primary flux is conveyed through the iron core to the secondary coil. Part of the flux goes to the air and this is called the primary leakage, and the same happens to the secondary coil with the secondary leakage. Here you can see phi L1 and phi L2, which are not conveyed in the iron core, so not all the primary flux cut the secondary coil. These pulsating flux leakages self-induce an EMF on the coil which opposes the voltage. So, a real transformer can be drawn down like this, in which we have the inductive effect represented by two inductors, X1 and X2. Another loss is caused by the eddy current. The variating flux self-induce an EMF and a current not only on the coil but even on the iron core. To minimize this, the core is usually laminated as you can see on the picture.
but the real transformers are other losses in addition to eddy current and flux losses. A current passing on the coil has a little drop caused by resistive effects and different level voltages in different parts of the transformers cause capacitive effects. We have, for example, capacitive effects between coils and among the turns of the coil. For this reason, the non-ideal model of a transformer is more like this. One of the more frequent use of transformers is on the global electricity grid. Transmission networks and distribution lines are interconnected through substation transformers. Transformers have to step up the voltage to very high voltage to minimize the losses on the long distance transportation and to step down the high voltage when we are near to the final destination. Other frequent uses of transformers are in power station units to supply the DC current and voltage to our electronics devices. Smartphones, TV, computers, all these devices usually need direct current a lower voltage than the one available on the electricity grid. The voltage step down is achieved by a transformer and the a CDC conversion is achieved with particular rectifier circuit, which we see in next video. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you liked this video. Make sure you put that thumb up, click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel.